All right, we are joined uh, here in studio by our good friend uh, Tim Leonard to talk some men's lacrosse. Uh, before we get into the lax team, let's talk about what happened last night, WNBA draft. Uh, we thought the Asia Fair was going to go around 10 or so. Uh, she slipped a few spots, 16, but seems like a really good landing spot yeah. with uh, the, the best team in the WNBA. Yeah, the back-to-back defending champs. So I, I guess you could say, well, it's a tough roster to crack on one hand, but I think as far as landing spots, if you – do make the roster, you're probably playing deep into the postseason. And, you know, their head coach, Becky Hammond, is a small guard who I think the way that they talked about in the broadcast, how she was excited and they asked her beforehand, the TV crew, you know, what if DeAsia Fair was there for you at the 16th pick? And she was like, oh, that'd be great. So that gives me some optimism that maybe she's going to crack this roster. And the fact that the head coach also kind of knows what comes with being a a smaller guard and and people sort of counting you out is maybe a good thing for DeAsia. Were you surprised that she dropped to 16? Maybe a little bit. I, you know, it's interesting watching that broadcast. It, it kind of went according to plan the first six, seven picks. And then they started to incorporate some international players. So I think is a little bit tougher to guess where they end up, but I'm guessing it's the height. I mean, I, I think that's going to be the knock on her. It's been the knock on her her entire career, and she's proved people wrong at every step to this point. And, you know, if you have the option of, like, Nika Mule, who's a guard at 5'11", or DeAsia Fair at 5'5", five, five, I think they're considering that. And she's going to be probably the shortest player in the league if she makes the team. There's another player, I believe, that is 5'5", five, five, that is in the WNBA right now. But, look, I mean, the height was a question mark when she came to Syracuse, and... Honestly, she played better against tougher competition. So I think if it's the right team and they kind of let her do her thing and they give her the keys sort of and give her the freedom and the confidence to do her thing, then I think she'll be a a key contributor for a WNBA team. All right, let's switch gears to talk men's lacrosse now. And I I had the chance to talk with Gary Gate uh, Mm -hmm. this morning for our Orange Nation lacrosse show that's going to be airing tonight. And I asked him about these comebacks from the opponent. We saw it in the Cornell game. Syracuse was up seven. Cornell came back and ended up winning a double overtime. Another big lead against North Carolina. Tar Heels come back, and and their comeback fell just short. They lose 10-9, and Syracuse was able to hang on. I asked him if there was a common thread. He pointed to Pat March not being there. Um, How much do you think that played into the fact that both of these opponents were able to come back on the orange? I think it is a factor for sure. I know that they really worked a lot on the clearing game and having a, a better grasp of that going into this week, and Pat March is involved pretty thoroughly in the clearing game and practice and stuff like that, and that was the downfall of the Cornell game. Cornell went to a 10-man ride. They had six failed clears in the second half when they lost that game. And that was still a troublesome area in the fourth quarter here, not having Pat March. I think uh, Coach John O'Dearna kind of handled those responsibilities of the ride and clears and took on a little bit more of the bulk load uh, with the coaching change and not having Pat March available. But I think teams are scouting Syracuse, and they understand. And for those that are listening, they're like, what's a 10-man ride? It's basically like a full-court press in basketball. So... Think about a basketball team that's struggling to hold the lead because they're seeing full court pressure. Then that goes on the scouting report and teams are going to deploy that. And UNC is a team that typically uses a 10 man ride anyway. They kind of went back and forth. And then of course, in the second half, they're going to deploy it when they're down. There were a couple failed clears in the fourth quarter and at six fourth quarter turnovers. So that's the thing. It's just kind of clearing and being smarter with possession in the fourth quarter. They won the game, though, yeah. uh, which is the important thing, and that was one that they needed to have, you know, to to lock up a spot in the ACC tournament. Uh, do you feel like they're safely in the NCAA at this point? I, I do. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, now, right now, they're probably right on the hosting line, which is the next thing that you start to focus on. Top eight teams, of course, can host that first game. So, to me, if you win one game the rest of the way, be it either Virginia on Saturday or the ACC tournament first round game. It's looking like they might even play Virginia again in that game. And they'd have two weeks to prepare for that game. They're off the final week of the regular season. So maybe you win the ACC tournament game or you beat Virginia at home. I think if you win one more game, you're probably definitely hosting, but I do think they're inside the NCAA tournament field right now, just because of the schedule they played their RPI is strong. They played all the top four teams in the RPI. They're two and two in those games. They don't have anyone on their schedule that is really like a bad win even. I think Gary did a good job of kind of fixing that problem from last year. Last year, they played Holy Cross, St. Bonaventure, teams like that that kind of weigh down your your RPI. And really the only like 
team they played this year was Hobart, but that's a rivalry that goes back for a while, so it's fine to play them, I think. But I think overall, just given their schedule and their quality of wins, they should definitely be in at this point. What uh, are you expecting on Saturday against Virginia on the field? We'll talk about the off the field stuff and yeah. the Paul Gates ceremony here in a second, but just Cavaliers coming off a loss. They're ranked ahead of Syracuse uh, in the poll right now, number four, uh, SU number six in the media poll. What are you expecting from the Cavs? So Virginia leads the country and cause turnovers and they 10 man ride typically as well. I think Syracuse will probably be in the game going into the fourth quarter would be my guess just because they'll have the crowd on their side. I think they're just as good as Virginia. It's just going to be, can you execute in the fourth quarter? And, you know, it's fascinating because I obviously do the women's basketball as well. And that team was like the best fourth quarter team I've ever been around. And I was sort of thinking as a comparison to why they were doing well and why Syracuse maybe isn't doing well in the fourth quarter on the men's lacrosse side. It feels like the Orange are so known offensively for their passing and sort of taking chances And it feels like sometimes in these fourth quarters, they get the lead and Gary is like, all right, let's slow it down. Their big uh, motto this week was calm is contagious. They want to just be smart with the ball and and be safe and, and sort of slow it down a little bit. But that is not what's in the DNA of their offense when it's humming. You know, they're the DNA of their offense is to take chances, highlight real goals And they don't necessarily have someone that is like a break you down, quick footed dodger at the attack position. Obviously, Joey Spillane is great and he's a terrific passer and he fits into what they want offensively for the entirety of a game very well. But, you know, UNC had a guy like Owen Duffy, who's the number one recruit this year, and he can go make an individual play and score in isolation kind of. They kind of lack that guy. So sometimes it feels like they just slow it down. And then all of a sudden the shot clock's at 2030 and it's like, all right, how can we get into it quickly if we're not doing our normal kind of pass it around and, and do that type of offense. So I think it's just balancing that line of, all right, let's, Try and keep the pedal down a little bit, but also be smart in the fourth quarter if we're leading. All right, let's talk about the the off the field stuff now. And uh, you know, it, it seems like this is much overdue, but you know, Paul Gate finally going to join his brother uh, by having his jersey retired. Um, you know, same day as the spring game. There there does seem like a lot of buzz right now on campus about Saturday for a lot of reasons. Uh, speak to what we should expect from the. The jersey ceremony and yeah. how emotional that'll be for everybody in the building. It'll be really exciting. I know that he's going to speak during the halftime portion of it. And they've been retiring like one player every year. Obviously, Gary was a couple years ago. Mikey Powell was last year. So, yes, well overdue. But I, I think we're overdue on on a lot of players sure. with the, the history of the lacrosse program. So it'll be cool to see the gate jersey right up there next to Gary and and that'll be fitting, and I think it will be emotional for Paul. He'll be back. He, he is paralyzed and will be in a wheelchair, and um, it seems like he hasn't missed a beat in terms of being a warrior and, and still kind of tacking every day with the right attitude, even with that. So it'll be exciting for him to be back, and then, you know, it's also alumni weekend, and it's just Syracuse-Virginia is a big rivalry in general. So Gary has really been excited about this game from the very start of when he put together the schedule. He's really been trying to do all he can to get the attendance up for this game. And he said that, you know, I I want the attendance to be like it was when Paul and I were playing here. Obviously, you got to win and you got to be a national title contender again, and, and then it'll grow. But they're certainly making their the right steps this year in that regard. So... I think it should be a great turnout on Saturday, and then you combine it with the spring football game. I mean, if you're going to the spring football game, you might as well go to the lacrosse game as well. Right. So the the, uh, lacrosse game's at 2. The spring football game will start at 7. What what are you most looking forward to uh, regarding the football game? You know, I I think the fact that it's going to be, as far as I can tell, an exciting kind of real game out there for a spring football game. And just seeing Kyle McCord, I I think he's obviously not going to play like a ton of time, I would guess. But from what I've heard, Kyle McCord in practice and everything is the real deal. And I haven't seen him a ton up close in practice. So I'm just looking forward to to seeing him because it seems like he's as good of a quarterback as we've had here in a long time. All right. Should be a, a special Saturday inside the Dome. Tim, as always, thanks for coming up. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And and we've got you on the uh, lacrosse show yes, tonight. Yes. Yep. Another right. Orange Nation. 7 to 730. That's right. Uh, Not TV version of Orange Nation on uh, no, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, Is that when everyone won an award? 
Uh, then shut up. Probably. I don't. I, I, I don't the know. The TV show predated the radio. I think show. Hey, the TV hey, show hey, did hey. predate the radio show. Award winning. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, we certainly never won three in a row. So that that is unique to to radio. But seven to seven thirty news channel nine tonight. We've got our Orange Nation lacrosse show. We're going to take a time out here. We have a lacrosse show on TK ninety nine from six do. to seven tomorrow. There you go. From Heritage Hill North. So we've got you covered on yeah. the radio side of things yeah. and TV Thank side. You. That's why this relationship works. The actual so well. head coach will be on it. He's going to be on he's tonight. Be, he's gonna be on Were you tonight listening too. to the interview? He apparently wasn't. I spoke with him earlier today, Paul. Paulie and the professor. <laughs> Back after this. <laughs>